Hey, greetings YouTube. Uh, brief announcement. Um, for those who haven't noticed, we have actually started doing a semi-regular live broadcast over on uh, the showsucks.com. So if you don't want to wait for me to get around to actually get this crap up on YouTube, you can go over to the show that sucks, just like the screen name here, spelled S-U-X dot com, and watch us record these things. Right now, all you're going to see is Bits, Happy Jolly Face, because we're, we, basically, we have the workload split up between his setup and my setup, because neither one can handle doing the thing full. I'm getting the video over here, but I'm not streaming it up. He's basically speaker phoning everybody in over there, uh, and doing the audio side and then we're further splitting up publishing of that. So the audio is going out one end, the video is coming out the other end. Both ends are behind right now. I've still got to get last week's stuff up. Hopefully this announcement makes it into the beginning of it. So uh, for those of you who largely just listen and want to interact more and such, it's there. It, we will get it better. We will try and get it where it's at least as visually interactive as YouTube, preferably more so. That's going to take some additional equipment, some additional things that neither one of us have right now. Uh, in addition, Ben brought up a good point in the shows I'm editing right now, which I think I'm going to publish this as the pre script for, like I said. And that is, now that we're doing this a little more formal, should we try and structure a time limit? I know some of you like the fact that we basically babble and don't get off of a topic until we're ready to bite each other's heads off for babbling about it way too long, but I also know that annoys the heck out of some of you. So should we try and um, you know shrink them down where we cover the individual topics in 5 to 20 minutes and break it up into groups of shows of 20 to 40 minutes where the overall show is you know about 40 minutes? maybe uh, an hour or a little more, or should we just let it go uh, like it always has and just kind of go wherever the devil it does? Um, while we're figuring that out, in the meantime, one of the things we are allowing in the live stream is uh, random Skype-ins. So far it's been good people, but I'm sure eventually we'll get a troll. Those of you who would like to come and troll live, feel free. Just understand, you will be surrounded. <laughs> Okay, uh, that's it for the announcements. So that's out. Uh, uh, some feedback. Uh, I apologize for the delays. Is and uh, as far as how that site's going to grow out, it's really going to depend what the devil y'all want. It can either just be a place for the live broadcast and a place for getting the RSS feed for the podcasts and show notes. Or we can actually, you know, develop it further. So it's like, it, it, what do y'all want? If y'all go to it, we'll do it. I'm debating about whether or not to put AdSense on there or not. In the same way I've debated about whether or not to have advertisements in the videos here or not. I mean, Google has been harassing me since before they took the time limits off to put advertisements on the videos over here. I still remember what they did to people like Jordan. Um, on the other hand, they are one of the best ways to monetize content. And right now, I am spending my own money, my own time, and getting nothing in exchange for it except for a little bit of fun. Now, granted, the fun is worth it. But it would be nice if this network could at least pay for itself. Uh, there's a donate button on the site. It don't go to anything that works right now. If I can click it, it's just going to go a little pound hash sign. I'm debating whether or not we even want to put a donate page in there because the PBS model only really works if you got a core audience of people who want to do it. Uh, the other idea I've been throwing around is going, everything will stay ad free as long as donations are raised enough to cover at least half the costs. So only half of it's coming out of my pocket. Um, otherwise ads go on and you know ads can be yanked off any time. That's a simple few tweaks to the lines of code to the page, so I can just wipe those temps and uh, change the PHP include. But um, I, that kind of seems like extortion. I, I don't know. So those are the random thoughts going around over here, back and forth. Now they're out in public. 
Uh, like some feedback from y'all about uh, those. I mean, I know the ones of you who are the core audience who are always here. I know the ones of you who are new and, and who are starting to interact more. Love to know what y'all think. Okay. Peace out now. Uh, we will be doing a show in theory tonight. In theory. D3 is calling, so it's... I, I, I may be distracted, but we will be doing something. I think. Okay. <laughs> peace out all. I did uh, structure the show when we do this, like in streaming, maybe an hour and a half, or keep it like at, uh, like at two hours, and then just religiously keep to it no matter what. Or uh, I know the last show, which was supposed to be like more of a like the like the drunken, disorderly, chaotic show. It didn't matter, but if we're gonna do this every you know, every Tuesday and Thursday, probably have to. Have well, it, my my logic on that. We can do if we have to. We if we we can break it into multiple shows, but ideally we can keep a show at forty to seventy minutes. I, I mean, we've got four main topics here, anyways. We've got our, you know, what the fuck stuff. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Linux, Rim. We don't always have stuff in every category. But it's like, I mean, we could do a Microsoft show, we could do an Apple show, we could do a Google show, we can kind of break it into that flow. Alright, Bob, so is that a go to send your email address? Yeah, uh, instead of my Gmail one, just send it to my Yahoo one. It's the one I use for all my random stuff that I have to sign up for. <laughs> um, instead of a full dark one, 778, like on my Gmail, just in between dark and one, just add a uh, underscore and put at Yahoo. Okay, so it's so it's that your your dark one underscore seven seven at Yahoo. Yeah, dark underscore one seven seven eight at Yahoo and, and you realize, dark for people who are paying attention, you just gave out your email, both your emails. No, I'll stop it. I'll stop the feed anyway because we're gonna have to stop and start if we're actually gonna record this. So okay, I just yeah. stopped the cast the show. <laughs> Rusty, all they have to do is search, you know, the internet anyway, so... Yeah, I, I know. I, well, and I, I, once we get figure out the schedule, son, I can... I, it's, in theory, this setup can also stream. So we can maybe try doing that, too. I don't know, but... No, I don't want to add my Facebook crap. Thank you. All right, so let me say what it is. Dark1 underscore 778 at yahoo.com, right? right. No. Uh, dark underscore one seven seven eight. You know what, Dark? Just type it in the in the Skype yeah, chat. Yeah, and then at, at yahoo.com, right? Yeah. All right, it's coming at you. Uh, there's already a live stream user with that specified ID. Yeah, I already made it. <laughs> oh, fuck. Okay. Just to make it more complex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just to say he's existing. Uh, yeah, I just logged into your live stream IRC or whatever the hell they're calling it. Tiny, do you want to join us? So yeah, there's a Facebook chat and a Twitter chat. <laughs> what are you saying, Dark? What existing live stream user? Dark underscore one seven seven eight yahoo dot com. Is that is that your username? What is your username? My username is dark one seven seven eight like it normally is. Oh shit. Am I the only one who's noticing that live stream has an ungodly amount of bottom third ads? Oh yeah. I, I take one down and also another one. Chill. Yeah, I, I, uh, another three. It's, it's like I'm playing whack a mole here. Okay, but but you know what? This thing works versus UStream. Yeah, it is better than UStream. This thing is this this video setup is really coasting. I'm, I'm yeah, but my logic is if there's ads, we should be getting paid for them. I understand. Wasn't UStream taken over by Microsoft? Uh, UStream? Yeah. Not sure. I remember hearing they took o they took over Microsoft. I thought that was Skype. All right, so what happens now? So if we go to the show that sucks now, 
You have, a, bi- you have a big stuff. offline message that's that's scrolling ads across the bottom every so yada yada. Yeah. And another right, ad. So it's just nothing. All right, offline, perfect. And another ad. <laughs> and another ad. <laughs> Doing this um, with the ads? I mean, what, what else do you want? <laughs> it's almost it's almost spammy. It's just funny. All right, now the question is, guys, it works. Do you want to do a live show now, or do you just want to do ahead with our regular stuff and just? Oh, what the heck! The chat room can tell us if we're sane. I've got the regular recording going here of worst case scenario, so we'll have triple backup. Broadcast here. We are live. And tweet it. it. And YouTube can get mad at us because I'm not taking a moment to get over there and tell them we're doing a live stream because by the time they read it, we'll be done. <laughs> uh. Okay. And of course, he's not recording the podcast. So. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, everybody. After Wait a minute. Oh, whoa, oh, oh. no, I haven't started right now. I'm just, I gotta, let me tweet everything out first. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, it says offline. That sucks. Live webcast in a few minutes. Go to the show that sucks.com. Now, let me go to this and. Webcast now on the show that sucks.com. Link in description. I think I've already done that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I ho. Hi ho, hi ho. Where are all the knock we go? We don't know what I'm killing you see, but it kills the bird of feet. Oh, fuck. Don't tell me you have to do this password again. Yes! No, no, it's for, uh, I'm just using iMovie to publish this thing really quick. Parameters incorrect. Shoot. Um, oh crap. I'll do this to me. Such a shit. God, I'm tired too. Man, I'll tell you this thing. You can't get it back on. Has everybody noticed that? Get what back on? What are you talking about? We're standing by a bit. <laughs> Interesting. All right, I'm going back on right now. No, I, that was iMovie trouble. Oh, you mean an, you mean Mac was giving you problems? Just iMovie with remembering the the uh, the uh, password there. Okay, and let's see. The podcast is now on. With right. live stream? We are fully live. Okay. Assuming the podcast is recording, we would like to welcome our lovable turning. Can we say your age? To me? <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Bit. It's going to be, uh, what, 37? According to, according to the message, 37. Whether that's right or not, I don't know. <laughs> now we've given it out. Now it's in the broadcast. And it's gone out I live. Care. I, I don't care. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday, Mr. Bit. Yes. If, uh, the, the show that sucks, also known as Tech Babble, now with more ads for those of you on the live stream. We, we, we didn't think there was enough ads in the last show that we weren't getting paid for, so we thought we'd add some more. <laughs> and our lovable, it pays for the bandwidth. <laughs> exactly. But except we don't get any money out of it. <laughs> doesn't pay for our bandwidth. <laughs> Oh, yes, yes, we're, we're raking in the money, that's right. <laughs> yeah, and Bob in this side of this. Yo, uh, we're going to try and stay to a time schedule format. Of course, we've tried to do that so many times. Yeah, we fail miserably. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, this is, watch the show go on for an hour longer than anyone we've done in a long, long time. Because we're trying to stay to a time format. Oh... <laughs> uh, uh, do any of you... Indeed, it will be interesting, but let's see here. Yeah, do any of y'all, or A, are any of you in the show notes? Uh, yeah, let me go to the show notes. Of course yeah. not. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> yeah, we have one other viewer of four people, and not, and uh, okay, there's one. <laughs> there's another. <laughs> okay, we're, we're hoping for another. I think people, I think people are finally coming in. I hope it is a lot easier to use this format than, um... The Ustream format, you know, people can get in and just put their nicknames or whatever. Oh, yeah, you know what? If y'all had been around about 40 minutes ago, you would have seen some really... It, we were basically in grumpy text mode trying to get this stupid... <laughs> so, yeah, uh, I'm hoping this works out better than uh, the Ustream deal. Anyways, uh, I don't see the I don't see today's date for your show notes, Rusty. Well, oh, uh, technically it's two five days seven. ago. I, I I I sorry, I labeled it five seven. Don't ask why. Don't ask why. I don't even see five seven on here. I just see you're five. in here. Okay, stand by while I remove bid and add it yeah. back. No, I'm in the show notes. I mean, I see the index of the show notes. And do I need to refresh it? I just, re I've just taken you off and added you back. Why? Why would that? Oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, again, we don't know what's going on with Bit. No, but I was in that index page. It shows all of. But the it only show no, notes. it only shows you the documents that register as shared, and yours gets weird. It's weird. Very it doesn't show you all the documents in there. It only shows you the ones shared. It's a Mac issue. Yeah. Uh, see, again, you know, Bit, if you would just join the good OS called Linux. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It's like, screw you, I run Linux, it's behind me. <laughs> yes, but he does, he's not using it for his primary OS. We have to convert him. It's, it's, it's good on the server, not on the UI. That's right. That's right, Linux is on the server. That's right. Uh, right. do, do any of us care that the cell phone carriers are, you know, going to be doing family plans and basically burning the candles at both ends, getting people to cheap out and pay more money all at the same time? Well, I, I, I do because uh, I, so I own an AT&T line and a Verizon line. I used to own a Sprint line. Uh, Verizon mainly because that's a corporate thing. And so there's a, there's a corporate discount. So that's on that side, but I'll be honest, I don't, the, while Verizon, I think has uh, just better call quality, and the LTE on my wife's uh, phone is, is incredibly fast, I am a big fan of simultaneous voice and data, so that's a big hit against Verizon. Now you take AT&T, where you do have simultaneous voice and data, but I think their pricing is screwed up, um, and... The family plan that I had on at and I just broke apart because I, I found that they charge um, a cheaper plan if I stay with my BlackBerry by itself versus it being part of the family plan by $20, $24. And so I, I found that that was just absurd. And I called them and, and, and said, hey, why, you know, this is a $20 difference. 
for just for, just for the spawn participating in your network, but yet there's there's twenty four more dollars you're charging me while it participates in this family plan. And um, so basically, the I broke I broke the family plan apart and, and moved my wife, my mother in law, over to uh, Verizon. And, and that's known as the mother in law plan. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, my you know, my wife, she's honest. You know, one of the a nothing in this phone. One of the, it doesn't do no t nothing to do with text or anything other than to uh, make and receive phone calls. So, uh, and 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 it comes down to what nine ninety nine just for the line a month. Um, sometimes that price even beats prepaid cards. So, just depends. Yeah. This so Bob, either one of you really care? Um, not really. Um, as a Verizon customer, I get the, uh, because my company, I get a discount anyway, so I'm kind of not really too worried. Well, you're not a family man, you know, you would yeah, Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Doesn't really help. Doesn't really help us, uh, non-family people. We're not family people yet. We don't have an appreciation for the family things just yet. <laughs> All right, who do we want to start on unless anybody has any more really what the fucks? I mean, we have Google, we have Microsoft, yep. we have no, a tiny a bit of Apple and Linux. Uh, we, we jumped on the Linux portion early, so I, I think we should probably jump on that one for a change. Uh, 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 okay, the, the, the interesting story, and I say interesting because... You can either say this is big news or uh, uh, yeah. Dell's going to be officially making Linux computers again. And guess what? They're, yes. they're Ubuntu. Ubuntu. Dell. Dell. And guess Dell. what? They're Ubuntu laptops. Again. And guess what? They're lower end books, but they're aimed at software developers. Uh, Let me ask you a question. I guess I'm a bit naive on this. Did Dell have a hiatus? Period of not selling Linux. Uh, they stopped. Well, well, no. They what they were doing. They were selling them to consumers. Okay. From from their website, and they stopped doing it from their website and moved to phone orders only. Right. For select for select uh, models. So basically, you had to go through a select third party Dell provider, and you couldn't get it from Dell.com. And this. Let's see. Yeah. It, it, it's honestly it. This isn't the first time Dell's done this, and the last two times they did it, they did it with Ubuntu too. But the thing mm -hmm. Dell can't seem to get their head around, and this article kind of points that out, and all the articles. Yeah, and this article's uh, Ars Technica, title: New Dell Ubuntu Ultrabooks. Yeah. They step in right and, and there'll be a support. link in the YouTube vid, but um, yeah. yeah no, I no, I know. We gotta give it. Chat. We, we, I know. It's, I know. I don't think it will. Uh, or if, if you can paste it in there. But, yeah, it's, um, I mean, basically what they keep trying to do when they try and do a retail Linux offering is they try and use it to undercut Windows in price. So they find the cheapest, most piece of crappiest computer they can, and then they don't provide support for their good hardware, and it's on, and they, did it, and they just, uh, it, they don't seem to get that Linux users do not want pieces of shit. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know, so you'd be interested, uh, one of the users in the chat, Black Ninja, um, I think you'd be, re you'd really uh, get along with him. He, he was on YouTube for the longest time and actually did a lot of Apple stuff, if I recall correctly, and then totally got into the, the Linux and Android and Apple is 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 is, is my slave owner. Yeah, I, I saw the uh, yeah. comment there. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, me and you disagree on about damn near everything. <laughs> <laughs> is that right? When it uh, he's on one side of the console deb debate. I'm on oh the other. god! Oh god! god. <laughs> well, bit remember, I, I, I'm the I sit in the middle. I don't cater to either side of the fanboyism. Um, hey, Glock, do you have a Skype? <laughs> <laughs> if you do, you can call in. <laughs> Thanks, Rusty. <laughs> I promise not to protect Bob. <laughs> uh, you want, we want him to call in, why not? Uh, I mean, if y'all want to get on the consoles, I guess, or whatever. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, uh, that, Glock that, had, is not, that is not my forte. Well, uh, no, Glock, Glock has other stuff that he, he does. Other uh, 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 Glock, call uh, the show that sucks <laughs> on Skype, spelled like the domain name S U X. That's awesome. So what's, what's this next article you you put up here? It says um, this come. What is it? Craigslist, Microsoft Store retail. Oh, I, I, I found that, and I found it funny, because it's like, look at, it, it, it basically, okay, they're, they're, it's, a, a it's an ad for their, for their, um, are you, a person, are you, a, are you the person your family and friends call and they need technical support? Can you sense what another person wants or needs before they ask? You know, I should just apply. <laughs> <laughs> so this person, yeah, I got I've, I've got going on 18, going, was it 17 years worth of uh, computer experience? Yeah, I'll have to get us at Microsoft Store. I don't think they'd pay you enough. That'd be fun. Yeah, that would be like seeing you at an Apple Genius bar. They're just. <laughs> <laughs> you know, neither one of those really makes sense for Bit. Oh, no, they just don't make sense in general. Well, then it's clear that's what they're going after here. But you notice the little fine print in the bottom must be willing to pursue Microsoft certifications and so on and so forth. <laughs> Doc's asking about uh, the Google Notebook. What do we think about that? Brock, do you mean the Chromebooks? Well, they are just a web browser, and that's it. Yeah, pretty much. It's a br it's a browser on top of Linux. That's all it is. <laughs> That's not what it is. They will never acknowledge that. No, there is no Linux. It, it, it's it's Google. It's the Google OS. Because Google doesn't support Linux when they release shit. But strangely enough, it happens to be on all their Chrome stuff, which is running Linux. So Yeah, their servers run Linux, too. Yeah, but yeah, whenever they release a service, they strangely forget about other versions of Linux. <laughs> Brock, I, I think it's going to be a hybrid. You, you're going to have some things you can do a lot in the cloud or Web 2.0, whatever the hell we're calling it for the buzzword of the week, and you're going to have still local systems. It's going to be pretty much what it is now. You hope. Well, I don't agree the cloud is the future. I think the cloud is just, is just an alternate means of, of communication because what people know of the cloud right now is extremely old, something that we discussed in previous shows. There was, there was cloud drives and uh, application service providers in the late 90s. That yeah, hackers the reason get in, they, they, your private info. Yeah, I mean, we went through the whole property argument already in the late 90s and 2000s. And now, granted, uh, doing so on the Internet back then was a lot more expensive than it is now. Uh, but to me, the cloud is not the future. I will never participate in terms of total computing in the cloud. I, I, I think the internet has its has its uh, part in terms of node to node communication and backup backup storage, uh, temporary hosting, things like that we're doing now with uh, uh, broadcasting. But as far as like all saying it's the future as an all encompassing, I, w I would say no. I think it's a single point of failure, um, and there's a reason why we do distributive uh, computing today. Um, it's not necessarily a single point of failure. Oh, cloud computing, yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, the, my, uh, I was just going to say my major problem with the cloud is that, you know, it's easily hackable, or anybody can just take your information, or if your servers crash, all, all your uh, work and everything you've done on the cloud is just gone. Right. I mean, I'll give you a reference, year 2000, Apple product called iTools, it was free, just like iCloud. You had a hard drive and everything else that you um, wanted to do. That uh, I think the only thing you did, they, they. I know that. you're not going to sit here and claim that Apple was the first to do that. No, no. I'm giving an example for something that people would know, you know, offhand. Just because uh, with the advent of iCloud and now the, the, the Google Drive and everybody's oh the cloud, the cloud, the cloud. Well, no, I mean uh, I'll give you a product. Is like what I'm saying. I'm. I, Something that people can go and look up, it's easy, versus something real technical. But the, the uh, iTools, I think it was year 2000, it was, for, it was free for uh, two, or, two or three years. And you had your own drive and all kinds of other things that you could do on it. And to me, it's just, a, 
I, I just think that we forget history and, and technology when we, when we make claims that, oh, this is something new and ooh and ah and all this other stuff. I, I think that companies just do a remarkable job of repackaging and relabeling and making and, you know, polishing the, the, the plaque off to make us believe that we, we have something new and uh, be the future. Well, no, I mean, it's a combination of it getting cheap enough that the average consumer looks at it, of the technology getting reliable enough, and of it scaling down enough that you have the extra resources you need to have the user friendliness. I mean, TiVo was not new when it came out, it was like eight year old technology, but it was new to the consumer. Right. You know what? And Apple even had a product before iTools. What was it called? E-World? I think it was E-World or something like that. And, and that was like a, a UI. Um, Are you talking about another... that god-awful, let's make the internet work like a town? No. Yeah, it was that. It was. It looked like, yeah, they had like locations where you'd go. Um, but yeah, like, like you were browsing reality. around the internet like it was a little virtual yeah. Oregon hey. Trail town. <laughs> I, I'm not gonna knock them. I'm not gonna knock them at the time. I mean, that was, virtual reality. Remember that? That was like, uh, <laughs> yeah, like but... and all that stuff. I, I, again, another way in which Apple failed to grasp the basic fundamentals of innovation and just regurgitated. Uh, well, <laughs> because Microsoft was just sucking eggs back then, man. There, you know, and Novell, Novell had. Uh, it was the um, you had their network administrative server and all that other stuff, and and Microsoft was a massive failure at that at that point in time. You had uh, uh, other niche markets like IBM and Sun were uh, doing fairly well, but um, I think Rock was saying big companies moving to cloud. I, I don't see the big companies moving to cloud. Big companies, especially the ones that I work for, remain distributed. But they utilize um, cheaper means of transport of their information, which means it goes over the cloud, and and they certainly use the internet in that, in that term. But these big companies, and big databases, most of those databases have tunnels. Um, like you know, my, my, it, well, I'm not going to get that technical. I was going to get into like cube stuff, but um, they you can have uh, uh, partial sections of database that communicate. Like I've worked with hospitals and have. A central repository. Him and his and, hospitals, I swear. And the nodes and banks the same way. Banks, I, I've worked, if you want banks, that's the, another one I program for. And they'll have location, 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 and they have a central repository and things like that. They're not hosting it in the cloud. Now, there are some companies that um, may like to use, see, if, and, and Google will let you, like, doesn't Google let you sync, or does it all have to stay up in the cloud? I mean, can it, can it sync to a local? Um, well, the answer to that is both yes and no. They don't make it straightforward, but they don't stop you from doing it either. It's kind of one of those, oh, yeah, it has the ability to do this, but we don't advertise it. So you, mm. as far as the average user is concerned, they're locked in the Google Cloud. But more technical users are like, well... All the syncing services I need to not be locked into the Google Cloud are enabled, and I can use them, and they work with all my applications and stuff, so, yeah. <laughs> well, I, I, see, I pref that's fine. I wish Google would allow more of a syncing, because, uh, quite frankly, I prefer iCloud's model, where it is node-to-node, -node. and although iCloud is very insular, but just to Apple products, the principal idea behind iCloud is what I what I like. I prefer a, a transport in order to sync all my devices with something. In, in other words, it's node to node, and I don't have to actually go just straight to the cloud just for the information and always either have some sort of portal to it. I prefer that my documents get synced in, with all my respective devices and nodes. And then also have the other feature of, of, of be, being able to have the service of a backup is nice. So. Um, uh, again, no, they're not. It's just that it's it's what UI they chose to go with is really the primary thing there. Uh, I don't know if I agree with the we're being locked in. I definitely, uh, honestly, the big uh, for I'm talking about what Glock Ninja is saying in the chat. The big way I see them doing lock in is the way what they're trying to do with the cloud and everybody's trying to do this Google Microsoft even to a point Apple 
they're trying to get everybody baited on the software as a service thing. Oh yeah, but you don't really own that. You just give us money forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs> yeah, but, but Rusty, in a way, does SaaS as a business model in general was really started by a lot of the Linux startups. I know that. And Microsoft and all the big companies like, oh, hey, they can actually make money off that. You, you so know, they'll... honestly, the only company I think, in my opinion, has that right is yeah. Adobe because Adobe will still let you buy but if you want to do the software as a service arrangement and get the unlimited updates and support and just you know pay the lease they'll let you do either one they let you choose which one works best for you what do you what, what wait I guess I'm confused I mean because there's lots of software products that I've purchased on Mac and Windows that have unlimited uh, updates and things like that well no no no, okay, there, okay. newer versions. A bit. Like, like uh, I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about with Adobe. Like for the Creative Suite, you can either give them up teen jillion thousands of dollars for the version of the Creative uh, Suite, or you can uh, just give them a flat, small monthly fee that you can turn on and off whenever the hell you want. And that just gets you no questions asked. You always get the latest and greatest kind of thing. Exactly. Uh, Which. So, yeah, it's like for some people they want to own it and have a, have a, have a constant version. For others, they, they want to lease it. Turn it on for this month. We don't need it next month. Or, and, so, and, and honestly, as long as they're offering both, I don't have a problem because you don't have the lock-in. It's when you start to have the, oh, no, yeah, you have to, it, it, just like the, your DVR from the cable company. It's like, oh, yes, did you want to keep those recordings? Well, keep giving us more money and more money and more money and more money right. and more money. Is <laughs> that Cap, what were you saying? You said everything, in the everything is in the cloud, but you have a local backup. Is that re regarding Google Docs? And then I don't understand what you mean by is that your idea? Uh, I'm assuming that he's saying you'd be content with cloud as the platform, I guess, as long as you still have local backups. Uh, well, in, in Bit's case, I know he wouldn't because what Bit really gets obsessed about with the cloud stuff, he is very old school when it comes to ownership of his data. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he is, he just doesn't trust anybody else to, he just... He no, <laughs> for 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 us normal people like me, <laughs> who, yes. As long as I have a backup and an okay terms of service, I'm cool with that because I'm not loading anything confidential into somebody else's systems. I just was raised well, to have more sense. To than me, that. it doesn't matter. Don't even downplay it. No, no matter what your, I guess it's like um, there's a user I respect uh, on YouTube that I had made a comment on their on their video and and it was regarding their Google Drive and and they were they, I. What I was trying to say is that they should address there is a difference between how data is viewed between like Dropbox and, and, and Google Drive, and I really like uh, Dropbox's terms of service. And their, their, their response was, well, I have nothing to hide, so I'm not worrying about it. That's, that's not the argument. Having nothing to hide has nothing to do with the argument about what is your property. Yeah, you know, uh, when when people started saying that crap, I wish I could have found the editor. No, no, yeah, there there was an editorial cartoon, like eight months back. It went around the blogosphere and uh, and a couple of the social sites. It it had yeah. these people saying, well, you know, they're only going after the guilty people, and it was like a paradigm between now and you know World War Two and so on and all the other crap. I mean, the reality is. It, 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 everybody has something to hide. Everybody has skeletons in the closet. Yeah, but so what does that have to do with what is yours is yours? And well, and it's I besides know, it, that. That was the point. It's besides yeah. the point whether you have anything to hide or not. Yeah, and and I I guarantee you there's a there's a line in the sand that everybody will draw and say, okay, this is where I really want some privacy, and you are not allowed uh, across this this line or. I don't want to say privacy. This is the line of the sand where I really start defending what I consider mine. Yeah, and, you know, my, you, my ben, argument is, is ben, that you say that, that but then you wind up something you like with marginalize it. Your property is your property. Period. It has nothing to do with uh, uh, what you have to hide or not no, hide. No, or no, no, bit. You say that we have already trained an entire generation of people to just trade that away. 
for the convenience and so on and so forth. I mean, cry out loud, I did it when we started doing this recording. I didn't want to give live stream certain information, but to do the show, I had to, so I said, okay, fine. And that's that's that's, that's where we are. There are compromises. There are compromises we make, but uh, now Brock is saying, but the purpose of the Dropbox is to share your property. That's if you choose to make it part public, but a Dropbox is actually a great syncing tool that you can keep very private, under, under control, and then you select what you want to share. And they actually have a clause in their TOS that, that states, okay, now, if it, you know, if it's public, you, we, we have to, like, I think, make sure of, uh, there's no obscenities and things like that, and, which is federal law at that point. Um, yes, federal but, regulation getting into the Internet. Damn it! <laughs> uh, yeah, TrueCrypt is awesome. TrueCrypt is awesome. Um, but it's, see, but that's I'm not talking about protecting confidential. See that we're not talking about because if I want something top secret or whatever, yeah, I'll use TrueCrypt and all this other stuff. It's not about wanting me to keep it secret or, or you can't hack into it or or whatever. What I'm trying to say is, what is yours is yours, and don't let these get away with saying it's also theirs by a loosely written TOS. And don't let them come back at you and say, well, we're not going to do this in practice. Okay, Google, if you're going to do this in practice, then trim, you know, trim off some of the statements you have in your TOS. And because it's just as easy for you to write in your TOS and have say, we will read this some of the Apple TOS? TOS? Not in this particular service, but... So... Okay. That, that's my point is not about keeping things confidential or you have something to hide. It's yeah, like I said, bit, Bit's thing is Bit is obsessed with ownership. At right. a time when everybody's trying to go, no, man, it, 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 come on, man, is it, you, how can you own a tree, man? <laughs> Ewoks. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, I, I do want to, on the one thing uh, Glock said, uh, you, everybody, be really careful about trusting Google with monetizing right now. I, I say that because the road Google's going down right now, I swear, they remind me of PayPal in the early aughts. Oh, you sneezed wrong! Banned! <laughs> and they, um, they've, they've really opened a really... Honestly, they've empowered black hats more than they've ever been empowered to just destroy their competition by framing them. It, it's sad. So, yeah. <laughs>